Hello you guys, welcome to the ranting shop with me, Melissa. I just stepped in quickly because the YouTube streets are like very hot these days, especially pertaining to ready to love guests who are making their media rounds, going on various platforms, talking about their experience on the show and, and, and other dramas and stuff like that. And I want to speak about Kayla and Mike and Little Black Book, aka well Kojo aka Little Black Book because there was this huge thing that happened earlier today that I felt the need to want to speak about. So Mike and Brandy did an interview with Crystal XO, right? And of course, Little Black Book covered it. And I also saw the interview and basically Mike was being very disrespectful and he essentially denied he, I don't know if he, I feel like he denied kissing her at some point. I think he actually denied kissing her. And like, even Brandy had to tell him like, sometimes Crystal would ask him a question and he would go around the question. Even when asking about the strawberry lady, like he could never give a proper yes or no answer. He had to go around and give the whole backstory of how Dominica was ba basically like bothering him and he was never attracted to her. That has nothing to do with the strawberry lady. Like if you and you have no strawberry lady, if it was something that she came up with out of thin air, if it was not true, simply say it's not true. Why is there a need to give all this backstory that has literally nothing to do with was there a strawberry lady or not? Now... He said something that was very, like, disrespectful to Kayla. He said, she was, if she was so attractive, how come 10 men didn't want her? And that was very disrespectful. And it just speaks to the type of person Mike is. Because he keeps saying that he's respectful of women. But in that situation, I didn't see any ounce of respect there. You know, and even when Crystal asked him, like, okay, so why did you keep Kayla around knowing that you didn't really, or you weren't really that interested in her? And essentially, he kept her around as a safety net. Because according to him, he wasn't sure if Brandy would, like, stick around. So in order to, like, kind of have a backup plan, he kept Kayla. And according to them, according to Kayla who later spoke to Little Black Book about that very interview, it was kind of like a mutual agreement. Like, you keep me as your second and I'll keep you as my second. Like, there was a level of understanding that we would be each other's second choices. And But how it played out on the TV screens looked a little bit more like, I'm chasing after you and you're choosing to choose Brandy every time. You know? But anyways, that's not even a situation I want to really get into. But I do want to say that I find it very difficult to really believe Mike. Because even how they portrayed him on the show, like when he would be in Brandy's presence, I feel like he would completely ignore Kayla and act like they never had anything. But then behind Brandy's back, He's running to Kayla, trying to speak to Kayla. So it was a situation where I just feel like he would deny a kiss. He would be somebody to deny a kiss. Even though it's actually really not that big of a deal. Everybody's dating everybody. But I don't know, I find it very strange. Because even with Looney's interview... It appears that if you set your eye on one person, then that means other people must back off that person. Even though you don't have a title, even though you all don't even know where you're going, if it's up or down, nobody must touch you, nobody but must interact with you because I'm interested in you. I find that to be so dumb and stupid. Like, if okay, look at the situation with Brandy and Mike. It's like everybody knows Brandy's into Mike, Mike is into Brandy. Nobody talk to Mike, nobody interact with Mike because he's with Brandy. I just feel like that that is ridiculous. Even when Clifton and Joy was on the show, Joy felt as if 
you know my situation is with um, Clifton. So why did you insist on this and did you insist on that? Everybody's still dating. I'm so confused. Everybody's still dating, but it's like there's this invisible claim that they place on each other where nobody else must interact with that person, which in just looking at it from the outside, it seems ridiculous. But I digress. But I feel like Mike... I guess what held Brandy to a certain regard, even to the point where I feel like he he lied a lot and kept a lot of things from her. Even as innocent as a kiss, I do 100% believe that he lied and he did kiss her. We actually saw him kiss her on the show. Yes, it was a cheek kiss, but we saw him. He kissed her on the show. We saw that. But still, he's here denying that he kissed her. A kiss is a kiss. Whether it's a cheek kiss, whether it's a small peck, whether you're tonguing down each other, a kiss is a kiss. At the end of the day, if you look at it that way, he did kiss her. So I'm like confused as to why that was a big deal like just admit you kissed her like everybody was dating everyone unless you told brandy things and lied to brandy about certain things because you felt like if you told her the truth she would like leave or go maybe that's what it is maybe you kept things from her because he feared that if he did tell her the truth she would leave or she would not tolerate it and bounce but then what type of relationship starts on a foundation of lies like, even to the point where they, Brandy had his, like, Instagram information, right? And she wasn't even able to see the images that he was posting on Instagram because he archived the pictures. I guess he was waiting to tell her in his own time. And then when she saw the pictures, it's like, so he was doing all these things in a way to kind of not make Brandy run off. So I feel like because he was so fearsome of what Brandy would do, that's why he kept Kayla. That's why he lied about certain things. But at the end of the day, the truth will come to light. And whether she decides to stay or not, she has a good or she should have a good understanding of the type of person Mike is. Because if you're not able to be honest about these very trivial things early on in the relationship i don't see how he will be honest about bigger things honestly but let's go into that whole little black book interview with kayla so kayla came on to address the disrespect she showed kojo alleged receipts of mike essentially telling her that he, she's a good kisser which essentially is saying that they did kiss. Now, you don't tell somebody they're a good kisser from a kiss on the cheek. Okay? There had to have been some touching of the lips. And I think Kojo saw the receipt. I think he, he knows that Mike lied. You know? And what I did think was wrong was that if Killer wanted to show receipts or, or wanted to vindicate herself, she should have showed receipts. Like she should have came in there with screenshots of everything to disprove it so that we, the audience, could decide, okay, Mike is a liar or Mike is telling the truth. If you just say or show it to Kojo, it's like, it's difficult for us as viewers to kind of vouch for you or, or be on your side because we didn't get that information. We were not privy to it. So all we have to do is to trust that what you said is true and what you showed was something that was vindicating you. Um, bear in mind, I never heard Kojo really say, oh, yes, I saw the messages and yes, it does seem like Mike lied. I never heard him verbally say that. But based on what she was saying, you can't tell somebody they're a good kisser if you guys didn't kiss. And I wish she showed the receipt because if she showed the receipt, we would have nothing to say other than that Mike is a liar. You know what I'm saying? But she chose to go a different right route, probably because if she did decide to out him, she would end up outing herself.
and she probably didn't want to go down that rabbit hole so she just showed it to little black book okay now where the interview goes wrong is towards the ending when Kayla is essentially saying that she did not want Mike to be a part of her interview session that she cleared her schedule for. And it seemed as if Kojo kept asking her, you know, like he asked way too many times. Like the first time she already said no, I feel like it would be more respectful to just drop it and wait until after that to do the interview with Mike. You know, it was that simple. She said, no, just leave it at that. If you had no more questions to ask her, simply say, okay, it was lovely chatting with you. Um, did you say everything you needed to say? If so, then fabulous. Our time has, you know, ended and it was lovely chatting with you. Leave it at that. But to keep asking her, oh, Mike is in the chat. Mike is in the chat. He wants to come up. Do you mind? Do you mind? Um, do you mind? Even though she kept saying no, 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 it was like that's why people thought Kojo was kind of ignoring her saying no because even the first time she said no, he asked again, and the second time she said no, he asked again, even after she stated why she was saying no, which is essentially that she felt Mike was looking for clout and he was looking for clout off of her. And there were several occasions where he stated he didn't like Little Black Book and essentially kind of indirectly stating that he wasn't gonna come on the platform you know and then miraculously she is defending herself and you want to speak and then Kojo I believe he thoroughly made a bad call on that thoroughly made a bad call and and then they said their goodbyes and then he brings on Mike to say absolutely nothing other than essentially saying that Kayla is a clout chaser. And she's the one with the YouTube channel. But you're the one with the Instagram page. With a hundred and something followers. You know what I'm saying? You're the one posting your, your, your private parts on Instagram. Essentially... Based on what he said he does, he's a gigolo. Like he's basically eye candy. He's like these like magic mic, these male strippers. I'm not saying he's a stripper, but it's like he's in that type of sex industry type of thing. You know, I don't know what he does in it. I don't know how to describe what he does. But based on what he says, that appears to be the line of business he's in. He shows up to events. He he does private things. I don't know, you know. But um, something along those lines. And Killer made some really good points. Like, how are you in that type of industry but want to, like, control and judge what other women do? That's kind of being, you're being a little bit, you know, highfalutin and a little bit out of place. Because you're the last person to talk, you know. But anyways, that happened. He brings Mike up. Mike doesn't say anything of value. And it looks as if, at the end of the whole situation, it just looks as if the risk that he took bringing Mike on paid no returns. It just made him, it just made the whole situation worse. Because, like, I completely agree with Kayla in that I specifically spoke to you and we decided on a time and we decided on a place. I cleared my schedule. I did everything I needed to do to get here at this particular time so we could do this particular interview so I could clear myself. I didn't think it was necessary to speak on Mike, to bring up Mike in any capacity, especially when it came to be bringing him up, like actually letting him speak. I feel like that was unnecessary and he just simply should have respected it, you know. Um, but everybody makes mistakes. It's the YouTube streets. Nobody's a professional journalist there. People are just doing different things. You know what I'm saying? But 
he got the most backlash I've ever seen him ever get. Um, and that's very unfortunate because I always want him to do well. I love the basis of his platform. I love where he's going with his platform. It's always more intellectual and thoughtful than other people who just want to focus on the mess of the situation or are not able to really articulate their thoughts and feelings about a situation as well as he can. But I just simply felt like he kind of over... He overstepped her boundary a bit. At the end, yes, you could say that he did do what she said. You know, he didn't invite Mike on. But she had to ask too many times. She had to respond or reply, I should say, way too many times. You know? And that was a bit problematic to see. And a little bit disappointing as well. Um... I'm interested to see if Mike is gonna even come on the platform again. And if he does, I honestly am not interested in hearing anything that Mike has to say. Because I don't believe anything he has to say. Honestly. On the show, as I said already, we've seen that when he's around Brandy, he acts as if it's only Brandy. You know, but when it was not Brandy or Brandy was not around, he felt freer to do whatever it is he was doing, which I felt was a bit hypocritical of him, and it showed a bit of, you know, one's, a likelihood of him to lie if something ever went down. Because I just didn't understand. Um, so that's my basic anal analysis of everything that took place in a very short space of time between yesterday and today. Let me know what you guys think about the Kojo interview. Let me know about what you think about Mike. Do you think that he has any bit of, like, do you believe him? Do you believe when he says he didn't kiss Kayla? Do you believe Kayla? You know, because in my opinion, Mike has more to lose to, to, to tell the complete truth. Like, he's the one that is actually wanting to make something serious with work with brandy killer has nothing to hide killer has no nobody to lose all she has is her truth and the ability to speak on what she witnessed you know so i'm it's very difficult to believe mike in that situation but anyways you guys we don't want to make this too long Simply let me know what you think about the Crystal XO interview and Mike's basically telling dissing killer and saying, you think you're so hot, but 10 guys didn't want you. Let me know what you think about that. Um, let me know if you really believe that there's no strawberry lady because what I interpreted from that whole strawberry lady situation is that he never really denied it. All he said was, in this show, it's me and Brandy. Outside of that show, I could care less. But that doesn't really say that you never spoke to an alleged strawberry lady. You know what I mean? All it's saying is that you're choosing not to take that situation seriously because your focus is how you look on TV and the narrative that you want people to see from what happened on the TV. That's simply what that's saying to me. But let me know, like, subscribe, tell me, share your thoughts in the comment section and see you guys next time.